How can I add flexible embellishments to my ornaments? Welcome friends, it's Gail here. We are making thick and thin flexible embellishments that can be used on ornaments, bottles, and other rounded projects. This is part two and complements our icy ornaments. We use two different methods to make our embellishments. One is pressing paper clay into thicker molds. And the second way is scraping modeling paste into thinner molds like you see here. We love the modeling paste. It's so much easier to use than silicone. It takes about 12 to 24 hours for it to dry and it's first time user friendly. Method one, pressing air dry paper clay in silicone molds. To see links and materials, click on more and scroll down. Anytime you have a mold that has a little thickness like this, you can use paper clay. You can also use in the deeper molds too, it's just that it might be too heavy. And I will review another clay in the future that might even be lighter that could be used if you have an extra thick mold. I like to use creative paper clay when I'm using my thicker molds. The first thing I wanna do is knead my dough. If my clay feels a little dry, I can wet my hand, mix that in with the clay and make it more smooth. It works like clay used in ceramics, except for air dries and you don't have to put it in a kiln. Before I use the molds, I coat the inside with vegetable or olive oil. I brush it inside with a brush and make sure I get down into all of the corners and crevices. The paper clay will hold a lot of detail. It won't crack and it'll have an extra smooth surface. If I don't have oil, I brush in cornstarch, dump out the excess powder before pressing in the clay. When I begin pressing the clay into the mold, I want to make sure I get all the details. So I'm going for all the corners and pressing it down very hard. I like to move the mold around a little bit to really make sure the clay gets into all those areas. To clean off the backside, I can use a palette knife to scrape away or I like to use the back of my fingernail, which sometimes works better. And I want to make sure there's no residue around the mold. When releasing the clay from the molds, I often turn my mold upside down with one hand and gingerly release it into the other hand. I will apply these clay pieces to my ornament while they're still wet. This way the clay pieces will be flexible. However, they will dry rock hard. There are two main types of glues I like to use when gluing my embellishments onto a rounded surface. One is tight bond, quick and thick, multi-surface glue. You can get this at hardware stores and on Amazon. The other glue is Mod Podge. Mod Podge is a little harder to use and you have to hold a little bit longer and be more patient. However, it's more forgiving. I can move the embellishments around for the first 30 seconds and not have to worry about them being stuck. Also, it creates a really nice seal, so it looks like all my embellishments are a part of the surface. I'm using both of these glues. I'm starting off with the Tight Bond Multi-Surface Glue to glue on my pieces. Then I'll come back in with the Mod Podge, fill it in, and seal it so it does look like it's part of the ornament. I just wanted a little extra sturdiness at the beginning before I use the Mod Podge. After adding all the clay pieces made from my molds, I am rolling up tiny spheres in my hands for the berries. I'll add one to three at a time throughout the foliage. Now that all my clay embellishments have been added, I can either paint it while the clay is still moist or I can allow it to dry. I like to use a darker color along with my main color. Starting with the darker color, I mix a lot of water into it to create a wash. Paint over the area I want to paint and let it seep down into the crevices and into the details. Let it dry a little bit. Then I go back over it with the main color without hardly adding any water. So it's more like a dry brush on top of that color to help create contrast and dimension. I'll let the paint dry fully before going on to the next step. The last step is dabbing a stencil brush into white paint and stippling it on top of the foliage to make it look like snow. Once I'm done with this, I can coat it with Mod Podge or a water-based matte or gloss varnish. My favorite method, method two, is scraping molding paste into thin line silicone molds. It's so easy. Paper clay doesn't work on these types of molds. To make my pieces like this, 
I'm using a light molding paste by Golden. Now there are flexible molding pastes out there and just to let you know that the Golden Light Molding Paste is flexible and you can see that right here. This dries in a good 15 hours for thinner molds like this and for some that are a little bit thicker in places I'd probably allow it to dry up to 5 days. However, these dry in about 15 hours. So I'm going to show how to make these. I bought these palette knives at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use this one because I want more of a flat surface so I can kind of lay it out flat here. I'll take some of this modeling paste and show you how quick and easy this is. And you want to press down, really get it into those areas, and we just want a flat surface. The bigger knife is better. Is it quicker? It's easier to get a flat surface across the back. Look at how fast and easy this is. It is amazing, amazingly fast. You want to clean off the edges as much as possible so that way you don't have a film there that you have to clean off later. And I just scrape it across like so. Get the excess off. The ornament I'm making will take two snowflakes and two wreath forms. I'm just going to take a big scoop here and I'm really going to wipe it down in there and get it down deep. So I'm pressing fairly hard when I apply this. It's easy to reapply the excess in the mold too, which is what I love about this project. And it is this simple. And all I do is place it on a flat surface and let it dry for 15 hours. And then we'll come back and we'll take them out of the mold. Again, make sure to clean off the edge so it's nice and neat. That way you have less cleanup later. Otherwise it will leave a residue like an onion skin. I will finish the other wreath off camera and let it dry for 15 hours. And there we go. And now's the moment of truth. We're gonna see how they come out. I'm going around here to loosen it up a bit so I don't break anything off. And now we'll see if we can pull this out. So I'm pulling this out ever so slowly. We're getting there. This is so peaceful and so fun and mesmerizing. It's almost like a meditative process. Actually, that's what it is. It's a meditative process.
Now that the acrylic paint has dried on the embellishments, I'm taking one of the wreath forms and I'm cutting it so that I can use it as a border to go around the side of my ornament. And when I look at this, it can almost go all the way around. It's just a little short. In this case, I have a couple of choices. I could use part of the other wreath form and fill it in, or I can just paint the top. I'm going to see if I can work with just one wreath form. I'm coating the back with Gloss Mod Podge and I'm applying it heavily because it's going on a textured surface. Gluing the border to the ornament is the most challenging part. After I have it aligned, I'm going to hold it on for a good few minutes with both hands just so it starts to stick. You can also see that the leaves are kind of popping up and that's because I'm going to have to train it and keep pressing down for it to stick and hold. After I do this for a while, I'm going to set it off to the side for a half hour and periodically I'll come by and keep sticking down some of the leaves. It will stick. It's just going to take a little bit of time and I am applying this to a heavy texture, so if you're using a smooth ornament, it's gonna be a little easier than what I'm experiencing right here. It does work, it just requires a little patience. Now it's time to let it dry and keep pressing down those leaves. After 30 minutes, I'm applying another coat of Gloss March Posh and really sealing down those edges. Once I'm finished coating the border with Mod Posh, I'm going to allow it to dry for another 30 minutes before I add the snowflakes. It's 30 minutes later and I'm ready to add the snowflakes the same way that I did the border. I'll add one to the front and one to the back. This time I'll allow the border and snowflakes to dry for two to three hours that way most of the Mod Posh will be dry before I move on to the final few steps. Here's what the ornament looks like after it has dried for two to three hours. The last few steps involve using Eileen's Glitter Snow, just adding a little bit to the top to get that snowy effect painting lines up to the top so it looks like the border goes all the way to the cap. Adding seven half round paper clay pieces to each snowflake so that's a total of 14. Two shoestring typos glued to the cap on both sides. Provided you got something out of this video please give us a thumbs up. We have plenty more ornament and wreath ideas coming up throughout the year. And you are most welcome to join us on our journey. Here's some more videos you may want to check out.